Hey guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another prediction show. We drew one all this week. Games on Friday and games on Monday and we could only muster up a point. Uh, JP getting the Derry Pats uh, result right and I got the result right in terms of Bowes beating Sligo. JP, you are very close. You can thank Evan Caffrey for uh, discovering your chances there, going three points clear. It's 47 all now, yeah. by the way. Yeah, see that? 10 seconds, I think, wasn't it? <laughs> you must have been cursing them on the Friday. Well, <laughs> I didn't see the score they they let on. So oh, did you not? Uh, I didn't even realize they did go on each. So I just seen the result. You must have they seen it. Seen six plus and went for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll get into predictions anyway. Uh, Bowls and Pats at Dalyman Park, and um, obviously the tour game. Waterford the Hutters on Thursday night. You're right. It is on Thursday night. Yeah. And that's on, uh, is it on Virgin Media? Virgin, thank you. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, their build up and everything's way better than RTE, isn't it? And the way they Amazing, coach isn't? matches and getting players even in for pre interviews. Um, yeah, you know what amazing. I mean? They do it right, don't they? I mean, RTE just. Above RTE, yeah. If there's a match on a quarter to eight, the coverage starts at 25 to eight on yeah, RTE. No. And then the finish is at 10 o'clock. They, well, like Virgin, Virgin Media embarrassed them actually in that way. So well done, Virgin, Virgin Media. Virgin started at seven and finished at half ten or something. Like, and and that's the highlights of the proper what you see in Sky on a Sunday for the English Premier League. Ah, or, it's brilliant. That is Premier League, like, it's, the only thing is, a lot of the time I don't see it very often because usually, and probably yourself in many ways, because we usually are at a game, but I'll be watching that Thursday night for sure. Trotter and uh, Waterford, and uh, yeah, big game. Obviously, uh, it's in the RSC, actually, and, um, you know, a couple of things. 4-1 earlier on in the season for Waterford. Drotter will remember that. And Drotter will be smarting, to say the least, after that defeat to Galway. Waterford did play on Friday. Uh, lost 1-0 narrowly to Shells, but although Sam Sargent kept them in the game with some excellent saves in that game. But um, they won their last they had a game. They chance to equalise. Hmm? Yeah, they did, in fairness. Like, they yeah, they did. So they're, they were in the game. They, they stayed in that game, didn't they? And, uh, you know, their record at home hasn't been the best compared to their away record, but they did win their last um, home game convincingly against them. They're, they're bottom at table for Humborn. Even though they won their last game against Dundalk. But they'll be looking for... Interestingly, didn't they beat Dundalk? What was it, 4-1? They've beaten Drotted at 4-1, the two loud clubs. So they'll be looking to do the same. Uh, not trying to sway your prediction here by any means, but... <laughs> they'll be looking yeah. to... Um, I'll let you go first. Say, like, you can have this one. I, I think they they they'd be disappointed with with the result against um Shelburne because they commanded on the back of three wins mm -hmm. uh, in a row after losing to Derry. Um, in their last five matches, they've won three and lost to Shelburne, lost to Derry. So they're not be too disappointed in that. Um, they'd be disappointed the chance that they had late on. They'd be disappointed mm -hmm. that that wasn't converted. Um, but as you say, Sergeant kept them in the game. To that point, but that's what your goalkeepers are to keep you in the game, and hopefully that your your strikers can can nick one at the other end, and and they came close to doing it, not quite. Um, I say like they've they've beaten Drogheda already four one this year, um, uh, beaten Dundalk four one, and I think they'll win this one as well. Mm. Um, Drogheda will be deflated, um, because mm. of how they they lost to Galway, as I said in the uh, Premier Division show. I don't think it'll affect them too long. But I think Waterford will they'll, they'll look they play on that um and, and see how fragile Drogheda actually are after that result and could take could take the game to them early on and um I know the last time I was very bold with a prediction and I went three 0 Waterford against Dundalk it turned out four one and I surprised myself with how close I came to that one in terms of the margin. I think they might win this one. Three one. Yeah, a couple of things. I think Trotter and Kevin Dotter would probably be keen to um be strong defensively in particular as a unit, like uh, in, in this game after that uh, the couple of goals I could see. But one thing I think I have to say with Trotter is I do think it's their weakest squad since Tim Clancy brought them up into the Premier Division. I do think it's their weakest mm -hmm. A bunch of players overall but they still have some good players and they still have that heart and desire that you, that you see in them and uh, 
and fight. And that's what I like about it. The club are a bit like that. But I do agree. I do think Waterford will win the game. I think it might be a bit tighter from my point of view than what you think. So um, I'll go for Waterford to nick this one by one goal to nil. Uh, Daily Man Park, uh, Bohemians take on St. Patrick's Athletic and another opportunity, I suppose, for Kenny um, to, to get something in his in his um, his Pat's reign. Um, Bowles obviously in the back of a 3 0 win against Sligo. Pats generally do quite well at Daily Mount in recent years, to be fair. Probably better than they do at Richmond, funnily enough, against Bowles. Um, it's a tough one to call. I just have a feeling it might come back to bite me. The Pats won't lose three in the bounce, if you like, under Kenny, but they might do. <laughs> it's, um, um... it's a tough one, but Bowles, I don't know. I think. Bowls will be buoyant after that win in Sligo. Um, they can be quite good at Daily Mount. Recently, they have been anyway. 1-1. One, one. Draw. It's the... Well, it's not going to be a 1-1 one, one defeat, does it? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> it's the third, third game in a row that Stephen <laughs> Kenny has come up against a, an ex-member of his coaching staff Jesus, yeah um, good point he had Duff at the FAI he had uh, Rory Higgins as a player on at the FAI as he was chief scout uh, and I think he was part of his backroom staff for a while as well and yeah. Alan Reynolds was the assistant manager at Derry all them years ago and I think he maybe was in with him at the under you get them all well. done early anyway <laughs> so he, he probably looked at the fixture list and thought Jesus Christ I'm coming up against these three um they know me inside out. As you say, Bowes, it's a good win for them away to Sligo. Mm. Came off the back of one point in twelve one point in twelve. Mm. And that, that one point in twelve came off the back of three wins in seven days. So they are so up and down that it's it's unbelievable. And they're I think they're the hardest team to predict, to be honest with you. And, um, and it's hard to predict most of the teams at the best of times. <laughs> yeah, I think they're I think they're they're at, they're the hardest to predict. Mm. Um I don't think Pats will lose. I don't think they'll lose three under Kenny. I think mm. he'll have a few days now on the training ground with them. They they get his ideas across. And I still think Bowles like will feel they can win the game, though. Yeah, Bowles. Oh, don't get me wrong. I think yeah. Bowles will feel they won the game. They'll probably mm. take a game to uh, some Pats eventually. They might allow Pats to what they did last year or last week was expect an onslaught um, mm. because Pats have come on. Uh, into this game two defeats under the new manager they won't want to make the third they will probably take the game they, they both and narrow, I goals. suppose in defence of them that way but narrow defeats as well they could have nicked the points against Shelburne they could have hypothetically nicked the point against Derry let's be real as well couldn't they so yeah, narrow wish they could have they, they, they could have nicked the point against Derry but they didn't really test Brian or hurt off in the game Um, so they'd be probably more disappointed that they didn't take a point against Shelburne yeah, um, definitely. But I, I think they'll get a point in this game. I think it'll be two each. <laughs> uh, Galway United and Dundalk, and um, Dundalk hate playing Galway. Do you remember the hammer <laughs> in the cup? 4-0, and um, they were well beaten at Oriel earlier on the season as well. Galway won 2-0. Probably Galway's best performance of the season, actually. They could have won by more in that match. Um, both teams should be on a high coming into this game, to say the least. I mean, Galway with that magnificent win. Draw the fans will be saying, you have to do us a favour here after what you did at Weaver's Park. <laughs> <laughs> but um, again, it's a tough one to judge, isn't it? That's the good thing about this. They're all pretty much tough to judge. And both teams should be full of confidence going into the game. I think uh, Dundalk's away form, though, does need to improve. I know you good results now have come at Oriel. So, you know, if they're really to get out of it, they need to, to pinch some points at least here and there in the road, don't they, as well? Difficult place to go to, as I said, they will remember that awful defeat in the cup last year. Gal will remember that brilliant win in the cup last year, uh, because it was four 0 It was four 0 half time as well, wasn't it? Actually, in that game, <laughs> unbelievable stuff. Waterford had the worst home form, Dundalk have the worst away form. Ah, yes, no surprise. Have they won away? I don't think they have. Oh, two draws. Two draws. Grover. So something's going to have to change for them away from home. Uh, you're on this one first, so what do you yeah, do? Yeah, I think 
I said there, Bulls were the hardest team to predict in terms of, and they are the hardest team to predict because you don't know what you're going to get from them. I think you you know what you're going to get from Galway. Most of the time, last week I think was an exception. Um, I think Dundalk. If Liam Burns is in charge for this game, I think Dundalk will, will be tough to beat. Here, by um, the time the video is out, there'll probably be three or four changes at Dundalk somehow. <laughs> And I think that's why it's important for Dundalk to, to get somebody in or let the fans know who's going to be the manager so they could they could settle down and look at a run of fixtures and say, right, well, we can pick up points that one, blah, blah, blah. I think it's important that way. And I think Galway will be boiled by that one and, and draw it especially by the way it came. And I think this will end... I think it'll end 2 1 to Galway. Oh, 2 1, you're going for another goal fest <laughs> for Galway. <laughs> Don't score too many. Yeah, aim I, think, I just think Dundalk, Dundalk will score, I think. Yeah. I think, uh, I don't I don't think Galway will, they say, like they beat the 4 0 last year in the Cup mm-hmm. and it was a 3 0 at Oriel this year. So I think mm-hmm. they will score goals against them. And I, but I think they Dundalk mm, might nick one somewhere. So I'm going to say 2 1. Mm. It's weird. I'm going for the exact same margin, but. A completely different game, arguably. Um, I'll go for Galway to nick it 1-0 back to their usual ways. <laughs> and they'll take that. Um, Dundalk, if Dundalk could get a point, by the way, even, I think it'd be a very good result for them, even on the back of the win. I do um, confidence building again as well. But um, Derry Sissi and Sligo Rovers, and you've mentioned this before, but Sligo Rovers tend to be almost a bogey team, if I'm not wrong, to Derry Sissi in many ways, don't they? I think everybody seems to be except some Pats Keith. Um, they they do yeah they they've always mm. uh relatively made it difficult for Derry if you think by way back to the nineties mm. they won the cup against Derry at Lansdowne Road and they were a first division team so um it's not just a recent thing that the, that this has been it's been mm. I think Roy Higgins touched on it was at the end of last season that mm. they always seemed the upper game when Derry City come to town mm. um. And I think that I think um it it's true. Um they they do and I'm not knocking them for that. Mm. Um you do what you, you have to do and Derry came close to beating them at the showgrounds. Um again they made a good save from, from Dan Kelly late on. Nil nil, wasn't but it? Derry, yeah, no no. Derry have to take advantage on this one, I think. Um with especially with Sharma Grover playing Shelburne. One of those two, if not both of them are gonna lose points. But Derry have to take advantage here. Um they didn't do it early in the season when Rovers lost to Shelburne at Boca Park and then the next night Derry drew 0 0. So um, Derry will be hurt by that result, but I don't think it, it'll affect them. Sligo will be disappointed with the result and the performance against Bohemians, um, and that was live in RT as well, I think. So it would make it even worse for them. I think Derry will win this one. Pat Hoban's back from injury. I don't think there's any further injuries. Hopefully, Mark Connolly's not too far away. Um, mm. I think Derry get the selection right. That they'll win this game. Uh, I'm going to say three nil Derry. Um, we we've won three nil against Waterford earlier in the season, and I think Waterford are a better team than, than Sligo. Um, and I think Derry could win this three nil. Um, yeah, three nil Derry. I think Derry will win it comfortably as well. And I know they have um, very tight games with Sligo. I just think Sligo's confidence is very, very fragile, to say the least, at the moment. I think Derry will be disappointed with the type of performance they put in at Tallis Stadium, to be honest, which it 1-0, as I said, does flatter them in that game, if I'm honest. And I know they'll realise that they have to put on a good performance at home here and get a win, particularly, as you say, with the two... um, you know, Shamrock Rovers and, and Shelburne, the two teams there playing each other. And um, a rare convincing win for Derry. I had 3-0 in my head as well, so I'm not going to deviate just because you said it, to be honest. So, um, Derry are top of the league for home form as well, like, so that's true. 19 points. They've been good at home. One defeat to Galway, is that right? Two, Shamrock Rovers as Shamrock well. Rovers did beat them there as Three well, goals. yeah, but they've won a lot of games there. Derry for me, 3-0. Finally, Shamrock Rovers, Shelburne, which is... Um, Arguably, the biggest game of the season at, up to this point for what we are yeah. and for 
what it could do because obviously Shelburne is still six points ahead of Shamrock Rovers. Shamrock Rovers had that good win against Derry as we mentioned. Shelburne had that um, really good win and Pats the way they won it. Um, Shelburne earlier on the season or early on the season, a couple of weeks ago, for example, went to Derry City and Derry failed to kill the game and they got a brilliant point in that game as well. If Shelburne were to go and get anything out of the game, be that a win or be that a draw, all these little things trickle into that, as I said, belief system that obviously Duff has them believe in, in, in their own way of playing, but belief in that they could maybe go on and actually win this league. Be massive to get any form result at Shamrock Rovers in that scenario. As I said, Rovers would be happy to performance, but at times they haven't killed games, even when they played well this season, Shamrock Rovers, and it has been costly in quite a few games for them, even in good performances. This is a very, very, very interesting game, to say, say the least. Jack Byrne will start, I think. He came on as a sub the last... They're going to manage him, but I think they had him to play 90 minutes against Dundalk, but they knew he wouldn't get the 90 against... Der- I think he'll play in this game. Um, McInef has come on now as a sub twice. Um, he's been out a long while, though, but look, Farouj is there. Kenny is playing... He was brilliant, actually, against Derry. I should have mentioned that, really, in the previous show, but we'd so much to talk about. Absolutely brilliant against Derry City. He's a key player for the game. Um, I think Shamrock Rovers are going to win this game, but I do think if Shells get something out of this game... I, I expect a performance. There's going to be performance for Shamrock Rovers in this game. And if Shelburne come out of it, having come up against a Shamrock Rovers team that performed and come out of it with some kind of result, then they mean serious business. Like we could be talking about them like next week as look, it's a defining game in many ways. I think I don't think if Shamrock Rovers win, it necessarily means ah, Shelburne are gone. They're falling off. Forget about them. I don't mean that. But I do think if they get something, we're serious about them now. But all that said, I'm going for Shamrock Rovers to win the game. We'll go for 2-1. I think Shells will see this as an opportunity to, to put um, Shamrock Rovers to bed, essentially. Um, they could get nine the points clear if they beat them. That, that That's why I'm saying that. Um, they will see it as... An opportunity to essentially put them out of the running. Now we can never ever rule mm. Shelburne out completely, but when you look at the the run that Shelburne went, they went on one win in nine games, and they're still top of league by four points because they've now started to pick up wins again. Because we argue um, about teams not taking advantage of, uh, or sorry, Derry City and Shamrock Rovers uh, uh, taking advantage of them, but who has taken advantage of Shelburne's dropping form? Nobody. Nobody. Exactly. Uh, well, you you could say that Derry has taken advantage in the sense that they closed it they within a point. Yeah. Um, yeah. You could say that because at one stage Derry were going to Tolka Park with a chance they could have went 11 points behind if they'd lost the game. Mm. Um, and but you could Rovers say that, not... that Derry-Shelburne game was a little defining moment, you could argue. A small one, because Derry could be ahead yeah. of them by now if they'd won that game, let's oh, say. But I'm on about the game, yeah. Pal, or Tolka, Keith. Oh yeah, Derry went there. Derry went there. Chance they lost it. They were eleven points behind. Shelburne see this now as an opportunity. They could put Sh- Shamrock Rovers within nine, of nine points away from them. So, I don't think they will win the game. I think Shamrock Rovers will win it. And with the players they have coming back, I think they could win it well as well. Um, I think Shelburne will put up a good, a good fight. They always do. I'm going to say 2 0 Shamrock Rovers. And do you think if, quickly before we go here, do you think if Shamrock Rovers were to win convincingly, do you think that lays down a marker a little bit? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Very good, JP. That was brilliant. Guys at home, let us know what you think in the comments. As usual, try out your predictions. Um, we read them every week, to be fair, as well. Um, and we usually comment back, especially JP. Isn't that right, JP? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Cheers, JP.